I am muted. I, one day I will get my buttons right. And next week is going to be the week, not this week, not in 2020. I'll do it in 2021. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Karen Kind's live stream. We do this every Wednesday at one o'clock. Thank you so much for tuning in on YouTube and Facebook. Uh, I'm your host, Chris Doucette. Today is Wednesday, September 2nd. It's one o'clock in the afternoon in New York City. We are broadcasting live from Karen Kind's broadcast studio, which is my studio apartment in Queens. So thank you uh, very much for joining us today. We have a great show today. I'm going to cover a couple of highlights uh, related to Karen Kind and Alzheimer's and dementia caregiving. And then we're going to go right into an interview with the uh, co-founder and CEO of Connected Living, uh, Sarah Hoyt. She's also uh, a Karen Kind board member. So she's like a two for or three for person. She's got a lot of titles. Uh, really excited about that. And again, if you're watching us on Facebook or YouTube, this is a live show. So if you have any questions or comments about uh, Karen Kind, about Alzheimer's, dementia, caregiving, connected living, Sarah Hoyt, plants, whatever you want to talk about, we'll talk about. Um, so, uh, so, uh, and please remember, social media is our friend. Uh, you know, Karen Kind does not have a, have a huge budget for billboards and multimedia campaigns across major television markets. So we rely on our stakeholders to amplify our message across social media. So please uh, sh share, uh, subscribe to us on YouTube, follow us on Twitter, join us on Facebook, uh, join us on LinkedIn, and join us on Instagram. If you like, share, and comment, uh, and retweet everything that we do, you're really helping to amplify our message, which is to support families affected by Alzheimer's and dementia. Thank you so very much. In fact, uh, I've got a special prize for people who are watching the live stream today. Anyone who um, it, it makes a comment uh, on the, during this live stream, uh, which is between 1 and 1.30 today. If you comment and say that you're going to be registering for the walk, you can't see it because my thing is on here. If you register for the walk today, uh, just leave, leave a comment on, the, uh, on this live stream. And if you say that you're going to register for the walk and you do actually register for the walk, then I'm going to send you prizes. Uh, you're going to get Karen Kine shoelaces. You're going to get a Karen Kine pen. And you're also going to get a Karen Kine wristband, which I dropped. So there you go, live stream. Uh, so uh, go ahead and comment uh, that you're gonna register for the walk and I will send you some prizes. When I find the wristband, I'll show it to you. Anyway, uh, that is, uh, that's the brief uh, introduction for today's show. We're gonna do Karen Kind highlights and then get right to the interview with Sarah. So let's, oh, there's a comment already. Let's, I am registering for the walk. All right, JT, that's amazing. Uh, thank you so much. You're gonna get, uh, you're gonna get some stuff. So, uh, so I will look for your registration on the Karen Kind uh, Classy uh, Walk site, and when I find you there, I will send you. Uh, uh, I will mail you these prizes to your home address. Thank you. I think you're Joe. I think. I think that's what's going to happen. All right. Thanks, Joe. Um, and uh, so that's number one. Uh, number two is Karen Kind highlights. So let's get right into it. We've got a, a, a couple of really interesting things that you'll only get by watching the Karen Kind live stream. So the first. Uh, the first item up for bid is just the major events that we're doing in the month of September and October. And number one, we're doing the Lorraine Hallis lecture on September 16th. This is um, an author is coming in and talking about transforming how we view dementia care. That's September 16th, uh, 2020. It's virtual, so you can do it from the comfort of your home or your office. And in order to register for that, you can't just show up. You have to get the link. So please uh, contact the helpline. If you'd like to register for the Lorraine Hallis Lecture, uh, call or email the helpline and they can connect you to the, to the, uh, to the virtual event. Also, uh, what else we have going on is the Karen Kind Gala. The gala is on uh, uh, October 26th. It, again, it's a virtual gala. So if you'd like to, uh, if you'd like to join us for this gala, uh, we have a 40-minute online ceremony and lots of speakers and music and all sorts of stuff. Uh, it's, a, it's a way that you can support Karen Kind as we support families affected by Alzheimer's and dementia. Again, uh, if you want to get more information, the link is in the show description of this video. 
So if you're in on YouTube or Facebook, ju just check the description box of this window, click see more, and, uh, and you'll see the link to the gala. And you can also contact the helpline to sign up for the gala. Uh, and the last thing uh, that I want to draw your attention to is the Care and Kind Walk. It's Sunday, October 11th. We have a full day of, uh, ex uh, of events for you on Sunday. It starts off at 9.30 in the morning with a 15 minute yoga section uh, with, um, uh, with Avita Bansi, who's gonna walk us through some poses. And then at uh, 10 a.m. is our opening ceremony. And at 10.30, we walk. We're gonna ask you to wear your Care and Kind walk shirts and walk in your community. Hopefully you'll take pictures, meet neighbors, and enjoy the day. Then we're gonna have you come back, and at one o'clock, from one o'clock to three o'clock, we're gonna have two hours of online uh, virtual tables, sponsored tables, tech fair vendor tables, and a couple of really great um, uh, videos to close the uh, walk event. One is a caregiving and COVID-19 panel discussion uh, with, with the experts talking about um, uh, caregiving and COVID-19. Sarah Hoyt, our guest today, is gonna be on that panel. And then we're gonna close the show, uh, the show, they're gonna close the walk with a concert. David Hyde Pierce and his Broadway friends are all gonna sing songs to express their gratitude on behalf of everyone at Care and Kind to thank you for being involved with the walk. Now, one last thing before we get to this interview with Sarah, I wanted to show you something again that only you will, you will only get here watching the live stream. And that is two new videos that we, one we released yesterday, one we're gonna release tomorrow. So, uh, so uh, I'm about to share, did it share? Um, I'm gonna share a video right now, it's 15 seconds long. And uh, it's our new social media campaign to get people uh, to learn more about Care and Kind and direct people to get the support they need. So 15 seconds long, let me turn off my banner. There we go. Oh, before I do that, three more comments. Um, Eleonora just said that already 200 people are registered for the Lorraine Hallis lecture. Thanks, Eleonora, that's a great reminder. Uh, luckily it's virtual, so I think our numbers should be unlimited, but um, call the helpline, make sure there's still room. Um, and, uh, and Alex uh, Wong is offering some good vibes. Always like taking good vibes, thank you so much. But Alex, I'm not sending you any wristbands, you have enough. Uh, and so let me get to this, let me get to this video. Again, 15 second video just premiered yesterday and at 15 seconds long, enjoy it. Pretty cool, right? And uh, I'm gonna do another one real quick. Uh, the next one is a, um, uh, the next one is uh, in support of, oops, hold on a second. I did that wrong again. One day again, in 2021, I will push all the right buttons, I promise you. And I will give myself an award. Uh, here we go. Uh, so this is the next one uh, video that's going to be released tomorrow that you're seeing today because you're special enough and smart enough to be watching the Karen Kind live stream. Here you go. And we're gonna make this full, I think. There we go. And enjoy this one. Whoops. All right, so there you go. That's the world premiere of the video that is uh, that we're releasing tomorrow in support of our walk. Uh, I hope you like the video. We're trying to uh, to really get the word out about Care and Kind and the work that we do. And if you see the video in the wild, whether you're on Instagram or Facebook uh, or Twitter or LinkedIn, please share that message. Get people to learn about our walk, uh, and and hopefully we can raise millions of dollars in support of families affected by Alzheimer's and dementia. So that is the introduction, the Karen Kind highlights. Um, I actually didn't do my, did I do my Karen Kind highlights? No, I didn't. There we go. That was my Karen Kind highlights of the week. I did too many videos. And uh, so that, those are my highlights for the week. And now we're gonna get right into the uh, interview portion. So my next guest, 
next guest, my first guest, my only guest for this live stream is uh, the co-founder and CEO of a company called Connected Living. They create and provide technology solutions for senior, uh, senior living facilities and all of the stakeholders that support senior living facilities. Uh, she's also a board member for Care and Kind. So right now, I would like to welcome all of you. Uh, welcome, welcome uh, Sarah Hoyt. Sarah, welcome to the live stream. Thank you, Chris. It's great to be here. I'm so glad to see you. I'm glad we worked out the technology. That's very exciting. It's always the tricky part. It is. And just so anyone who's watching, uh, if you see any glitchiness, that is my fault. Uh, my connection yesterday was a little bit glitchy. So hopefully we will be able to do this uh, over the next 20 minutes without any uh, glitches uh, from, from Queens. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for being here. It's my pleasure. Okay, so first and foremost, uh, I'd, like to, I'd like you to introduce um, Connected Living. What is Connected Living and, and what do you do there? How did that come about? Well, Connected Living is a social impact company uh, founded to connect an aging population to their families, their community, each other. Um, a labor of love, like, uh, like most things, this came from personal experience, starting with my uh, grandmother and grandfather, who a uh, story of so many families were aging at a distance, uh, one with a very severe um, and long-term battle with Alzheimer's, living alone in New York with a caregiver, and a uh, grandfather living um, alone uh, down in uh, Florida. And like so many families, a decade ago when we started this, there was really no way to connect, no way to have a window in and hear their voice and make sure they were okay and have them be a part of our lives and see the photos. And it just was, uh, it seemed to us in the 21st century that uh, there really had to be a way to connect and engage and have the amazing voice of uh, that population. And so uh, my founding partner was in a similar situation. He had about six or seven family members he was caring for at a distance and really no, no information or window in. Most of his family members were in some sort of a senior living situation. So Connected Living is exactly uh, as the name says, we wanted to create private, meaningful, connection with the people you love and um, and really allow a format uh, to uh, have people express their legacy, their voice, be part of the day. If they're in a community, access things like menus and calendars and friends and uh, the activity and life that's happening, but also very much to uh, provide families, grandchildren, friends uh, a way to connect. And uh, as we've done it, um, We've really built a, a, a beautiful uh, a communication system and services and content that allow people, particularly in a moment like this, to, to connect virtually, um, to engage, and in many cases to be, uh, to be protected uh, as well. Wow, that is, that is a lot. And that's a, that's a tall order because it's a, complicated, it's a complicated set of circumstances with regard to senior living facilities, right? It is. And, you know, one of the things that we wanted to do um, is really focus on the life and the voice and the joy. Even the name of our company, I think, is very different than most products in the senior mm -hmm. living or aging industry. To us, it's not about to us. It's about meaningful connection with family. This is about family. And so the products that we have built, we have a mobile app that everyone can connect to. It can be mm -hmm. iOS or Android. It can be on any form factor, a large iPad or a or a small phone. Um, and now, of course, we have our robot, uh, Temi, who also uh -huh. the face is an Android app. So we have the, the app coming on there, too. But our technology spans the entire spectrum. Um, uh, we have uh, in senior living, digital signage, in-room TV that becomes completely an interactive device to be able to get your, your content. Um, we already we have the, the tablets and the apps. And we also have voice. We brought... Uh, voice into senior living in the homes uh, with a partnership with Amazon. Um, and it's really exciting. So even if other technology might be intimidating, everyone has a voice, uh, the double entendre of unleashing that amazing voice. You can connect with family music playlists. You can, um, you can get yeah. your books and you can talk to your family. So we really have tried to let people connect in the way that they want and access mm -hmm. um, their loved ones and access uh, information. When you think of the most, I don't know, 
prototypical technology solution that you provided for senior living, what's the one technology, whether it's complicated or very simple, what, what's the one thing that you think really typifies the work that Connected Living does? Well, I, I think it comes back to respect and choice because people are different. Not everybody wants a smartphone. Not everybody wants voice. Mm -hmm. I really think that our ability to let people connect the way they want and to not mm -hmm. put something in front of them that forces uh, a, a buying decision to let them have what the rest of the world has. I think it's called respect. Right. You know, grandma and granddad do want to connect and they want to connect with something uh, that the rest of the world has. So I think probably the most universal um, is the smartphone is an iPad or a tablet mm -hmm. or a, a some form factor like that because it can get you to everybody. Your entire family has some sort of a phone. If you're in senior living, the team, the staff, uh, everybody mm -hmm. has um, a smart device. And so the most universal application, and this isn't just about senior living. We have a, if you go on the app store, either iOS or Android, there's a connected living app that is just for families. I use mine every single day with my entire family. Um, and uh, and it's to meaningfully and privately connect and share stories and you can have location, you can see steps, you can see battery life, you can choose to do these things with the people you love. You can imagine if you have someone in your life that has Alzheimer's, this can become really, really important. Location matters, steps and, and activity matter. Um, battery life matters. You say, please, for the love of God, plug that thing in. So I don't think that, you know, something's happened to you because right. I can't. Uh, so, you know, uh, little things like this, but it's respectful. It's two way. You know, when you do that, you can also, you can also, um, you know, know where I am and my steps and, and, and my situation for the day. So again, this is something you'd obviously do with people you're close to. And then of course right. we have a community version of the app where it has more features. Cause if you're in a community, there's menus and calendars and, other things that you might want to access um, mm -hmm. if you happen to live in a senior living community. Yeah. But right and now, this is in everybody's mind. I mean, this went from, you know, we thought this was essential and a must have a decade ago. And right. I think the entire world woke up, uh, sadly, um, you know, through this pandemic. And if there's any bright light or, or hope in all that's happened, is that everyone seems to be focused on the fact that people need a virtual connection because people yeah. are aging alone and they are and there are conditions and every all of a sudden the phone's ringing off the hook and everybody's concerned about it and and it's and so it, this is this is a moment where people can take some steps you know i i say to everyone I, everyone realizes four or five months ago this was also the situation um but right. this is this could maybe be one bright uh bright outcome from a really horrific um moment that we're all working our way through. Yeah, yeah. I, um, uh, you know, I think, I, I'm, I'm curious about how you started it with senior living facilities, but at some point, obviously, you quickly come, uh, you face the Alzheimer's and dementia caregiving angle. How, I'm, I'm, I'm going to assume that you didn't start with Alzheimer's and dementia, that you that came second, um, but if it did come second, talk about how, how that started for Connected Living. Well, I think, you know, um, Alzheimer's and dementia uh, has been something that has surrounded my entire uh, world, actually. And so I, I don't develop anything without without that lens in mind. And we know profoundly how many families are affected and how many families are affected that aren't even recorded. This is this is a, a global pandemic um, that we are all passionately care about. Uh, starting from a connected living standpoint, one of my initial inspirations was my grandmother um, as we watched her in this battle. And, you know, long after she didn't know who I was, we could sing every word of our music together, our Frank Sinatra and other things. You know, there's pieces uh -huh. that you have that if you know who the person is and you know that the cape was important and that she loved animals and she loved music. If you know who that person is, then you really can make a difference when you approach them and whether they're aging at home or in home care or in senior living. This is my point. I mean, shame on all of us if we don't know who's in that room. You can't just walk in and not know these things because if you did, it would be simple to know with a technology connection right. and you could really completely right. change your engagement and interaction. Um, I think that we, we know, I mean, we're in hundreds of senior living communities all across this country, every, every demographic, every socioeconomic and we know that most of the communities um, uh, are, are filled with people who are suffering from some form mm -hmm. of dementia or Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. And of course, we're also in uh, pure memory care uh, settings as well. And if you don't have it, 
uh, you're worried about it <laughs> because yeah. the numbers are such, yeah. we all know we're 80. Yeah. But, um, there's a very, very high percentage. Um, and, uh, and sadly, my family has been affected. Uh, again, the, the father of my children uh, has mm -hmm. very advanced early onset. I was just at the hospital this morning getting an MRI and it's, you know, it's, this is, this is, um, this is life's condition. This is lots of families. So I think that that critical understanding and importance that uh, a connection, uh, engagement, uh, activity, and uh, presence uh, throughout all of this, and now we add a pandemic on top of it, um, right. what, what we do at Connected Living has, has really just become a, a must have. And I, I just want people to know that it's accessible. It's here. The app is a free download. This is not, this is, <laughs> there, there's, there's no money involved here to, to make that happen. There's obviously products and and some people are getting, you know, the Temis, this, our new robot is, is amazing. It's, you can actually uh, control him from outside of the building. You can map someone's mm -hmm. entire home. Uh, he's got both Amazon and uh, our app uh, on there and voice. Um, and YouTube. And so mm -hmm. Temi, if I was in a, trying to find my grandfather in, in the house or my grandmother, I could actually have Temi go to the kitchen, go to the bedroom um, and start trying to find, uh, find them if are. I couldn't, yeah. if I wasn't there. Yeah. Kinds of exciting technology right now um, on top of your good old phone <laughs> to, right. uh, to help in these, uh, in these troubling uh, times. Yeah. And so the technology, you know, you, like you said years ago, People think of technology as a luxury. And now, especially in COVID-19 times, it turns out it's not a luxury, it's a necessity, right? Especially for it's people essential. in- It's absolutely yeah, essential. Yeah. And, and with price points, there's absolutely, and again, we're not talking about having to have some high-end fancy piece of equipment. You can get everything from a, a, a small voice device for $45 to a, a less expensive mm -hmm. Android device. There's, there's mm -hmm. you know, it, it's, you, Price points can go from fifty dollars up to a, uh, you know, a three thousand dollar robot. But um, these are these are fairly essential. You think of all the other things we spend money on, the ability to be connected, protected, engaged, and mm -hmm. and just know that the people you love are okay is um, is essential and priceless. Right, priceless, absolutely. Um, the anxiety on the caregiver to wonder about the person that they're caring for who might have Alzheimer's and dementia that's debilitating, right? and distracting. Yes. You can't live your life yes. if you're always thinking about yeah. the person and wondering if they're safe and wondering if they're okay. They're and okay. especially now that mm -hmm. you can't go into a facility, it's it, you're just disconnected right. physically and, you know, right. and metaphorically, right? And there's little things. It's, you know, it's back to peace of mind. And I think it's part of what's so exciting about Caring Kind and all the, the you know, the passionate mission that we're all on is you also have to, the caregivers have to take care of themselves and have to have some mm -hmm. tools uh, we know the caregivers get sick often at a rate higher than the people they're caring for because there's quite a, you know, there's quite a, a toll and the ability to have support, um, to have connection. I mean, there's even a, a simple thing on our connected living app where you can draw a circle around locations, right? So we've talked about movement, we've talked about battery life and social flow and all of that, but. I literally have drawn circles around the house, around and even around the school. This isn't just about. Um, somebody you know making sure your kids got to school okay and so when somebody crosses that uh, geo fence it just gives you a little alert on your ipad your phone scott's home sam's at school you know mm. these are just back to peace of mind i'm here at work running a company and trying to uh trying to help a lot of other people too but it gives you just that moment to know okay right that location was was reached and uh -huh. if all of a sudden uh, it doesn't happen then you can start trying to figure out <laughs> figure out what's happened. Right. And what would you say is the most popular connected living product for Alzheimer's and dementia caregiving? Like well, what angle you know, it, do you it's, um, it? Well, I think, you know, I think it's really the combination. So uh, I, I still would go back. I mean, for, for me, I think right now, and, and, and Temi is, is very new, this, uh, uh, this robot, but to have a robot that's less than $4,000 that has yeah. the remote presence, has the ability when you call in, if I call into Temi, my face is right on that robot. It's like you're talking to me. Um, also, oh, wow. the engagement factor on it is really, really fun. He'll follow mm -hmm. you around. You can do yoga. You can do, I mean, it, it's like you've got a, you know, a person there. Talk about a companion device. Um, but clearly the most, back to the most accessible, the most um, 
widely used, I would say, as the form of the uh, of any form of tablet, iPad, uh, smartphone. We've worked with seniors of all. Listen, there's often technology fear, and um, but when you find that somebody you love is on the other end, when you find that you're going to see pictures, all I had to do. My father had never been connected on any social platform. All I had to do was connect the four grandchildren and it was game over. You know, he's looking at it every day and what are they posting and what's happening and where are they? And and so it's kind of, you know, I think that um, probably the most universal application yeah. is, uh, is on the phone. Yeah. Although and I would what? say in senior living right now, it depends on your setting because in senior living, um, the digital signage and this new engagement in the room, what we've really turned the the TV into an interactive device and and the ability to have your church service come in or your yoga or your pictures or, you know, I mean, sadly, everything we did in the past is trying to get people out and going. And now obviously mm -hmm. the room for different reasons has become in many cases, people are, are, uh, are very much uh, having to be there. So we've done everything humanly possible to um, bring as much engagement and, um, connectivity through through each of the devices that you would naturally find in a room and there is a tv in every room so right um, right yeah well that you know i think you just answered my next question which was going to be what is the one thing you're most proud of and it's probably that's the word right connectivity connecting people to each other but i'm guessing what it, what, what are I you think, most proud of? No, i think that's right i think i think the thing one of the things we're most proud of is um almost sort of how you go about this. I've really felt for some time the, the the sting of ageism, the way that people are treated as they're aging, products that are created with some silly name or it's just for granddad or grandma. That, nobody wants that. People want respect. Um, right. People want people want joy. People want voice. And that's what we try to bring. And I think, um, you know, for the family, uh, there's three words. It's pe peace of mind, right? Peace of mind. I just... If I'm connected, I know people are okay, um, and and I just I just want to not worry all the time. But I also don't want to miss out. I mean, I really this isn't just about us making sure people are okay. The the people that we serve um, and have the pleasure to serve have lived many of them most of this century. Their their voices, their wisdom, their history. We have a whole time capsule on here where families can interactively tell their stories and share their photos and hear about what it took to build this country. You know, I think this is a moment where history is uh, is pretty darn important uh, with our democracy at stake. So um, I, I every day, I just feel like it's the reverse. I feel like we have a gift uh, of actually, the, the gift of connection is our ability to have these amazing voices and um, seniors in, in our lives. And so yeah. peace of mind and, and joy connection are, are my are my words <laughs> these are all i'm looking forward to all of that in 2021 for sure uh and uh you know and if you're if you're just tuning in right now on facebook or youtube please uh if you have a question uh or comment for sarah hoyt she is the co-founder and ceo of the of connected living uh and if you have any again if you have any questions or comments leave, leave it right now and we'll ask her and we'll ask her and we've got one right now uh for you sarah jt is saying in difficult and uncertain times, how do you stay focused and aligned on the mission that Connected Living was built upon? Yeah, how do you how do you how do you stay focused when the, the entire, especially in nursing home and senior living facilities, that's topsy turvy right now? How do you do it? You know, we are um, we have never been more impassioned. We have never been more focused. You know, when you say there's a moment in time when an idea whose time has come. We've been working for a decade to build these beautiful um, technologies and services and support. And now the whole world is paying attention and needs it. I mean, my team hasn't slept. We are, but but happily so. We The phone's uh -huh. ringing off the hook. I tell clients, you can call me at any hour. Like we have a chance to do significant good right now. There's a lot of pain. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of disconnection. We know that many communities don't have what they need um, and nobody's gonna come. Nobody's going to come to senior living if you can't virtually connect. And right now, even all the homes, you know, people are really focused on this and and we're really poised to help. We can do enormous good in this moment. So it's not just me. My whole team is just, uh, uh, you know, sprung into full action. And, and it gives us great pleasure because this is this is, um, you know, this is a problem long before the pandemic. And it's only just completely spotlighted and accentuated by it. And so we're, mm -hmm. it is truly our pleasure. So we have a uh, deep focus at, at this moment. And um, 
and excitement to be able to help. Right. Well, we've got to wrap up in just a minute. Um, and so if you want to learn more about Connected Living, uh, the, uh, the website for Connected Living is in the show description of this video on YouTube and Facebook. So just click that See More button and all of the links that we talked about today from Karen Kind social media to Connected Living, to the walk, to the gala, to the Lorraine Hallis lecture, uh, check out all of those links. Subscribe to everything that we do and amplify our message. Uh, and and so, Sarah, uh, as we wrap up, I, I want to ask you one thing. Since you clearly have a lot of experience doing this, and this you do this, you know, you this issue affects you in your personal life and in your business life. W it, should you meet a caregiver today in 2020 during COVID-19, what is your advice? What is your advice to that caregiver? Well, I think the first thing you you have to say is they have they have to uh, they have to look in the mirror and they have to take care of themselves. You can't be any good to anybody else if you can't stop and um, and and do a little something for yourself too. And I know for caregivers this is a hard thing. I, I kind of learned it the the hard way too along our journey. We also lost our our co-founder uh, passed away, and you know you have these moments where. Um, it just feels like there is no time. <laughs> there, mm -hmm. how, how do I do this with kids and people sick and the CEO and how, how do you do it? And you, and you just have to stop. I, I changed um, a couple of years ago. I changed my life around by just taking an hour a day. It's amazing what you can do religiously, right? You read a book, you do some yoga, you take a walk, you, mm -hmm. you have to care for yourself if you're going to be strong for others. I think everything we just talked about, let's get, get connected, Take, give yourself that peace of mind, find a way to make sure that the people you love, whether they are living with you or not living with you, if they're in a home care, if they're in senior living, or if they're in your home, um, get them connected. It will give you peace of mind, get yourself tools. You know, even on our app, we have Lyft family rides, we have concierge services, we have all kinds of things to help. So you have to take care of yourself if you're gonna take care of the rest of the world. And, you know, I think, um, I think finally, you know, just trying to make, you know, one of the things that we do in our house is, is, is don't hide it. You know, this is not a disease. This is a disease. This is not something that somebody chose. This is not something that's, you know, wrong with somebody. This is a disease. And so one of the, the, the biggest uh, lessons I have to caregivers too is put it out there. You know, if someone's walking in our house, we say it, listen, he's hard of hearing. He has a very difficult time with speech. Um, he may not remember what you said. Um, there's going to be some frustration and, and it's all going to be fine <laughs> and we're all going to have a nice evening. <laughs> it's all, yeah. But if you kind of give people a little bit of what you're dealing with, then when it happens, cause it's not, if it's going to happen, no one has to run around, no one has to get embarrassed or just, you just, you're just dealing with it. And I think, uh, for, for us as a, as a family, and as I try to work with others, you know, to, to put it out there and to not be uh, embarrassed about it, but just to alert people, this is the situation. And uh, I think it really, I think it really helps. So those are, those are my few words of wisdom could talk about it at, at length, but I guess uh -huh. most importantly, please caregivers out there, take care, take care of yourselves too. Um, because we, we know what the stats say and um, caregivers are getting sicker at a, at a fairly rapid rate because, mm -hmm. because they don't, because it's hard. And I think the pandemic only um, accentuates that too. So yeah, take yeah. a walk, <laughs> eat a yeah. book, yoga. <laughs> good advice. All good advice. Sarah Hoyt, co-founder and CEO of Connected Living. Thank you so much for stopping by in the live stream today. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you guys so much for what you're doing and the inspiration and the innovation that you, Eleonora, this whole team, it's really, it is absolutely my pleasure to be a part of it. And I look forward to, uh, all that we're doing and everybody who hasn't already signed up for the walk, sign up for the walk. I'm going to get my page out there everywhere this week, <laughs> as you know. <laughs> Listen to that lady. Sarah, thank you so much. Bye. Talk Take to care. you soon. Bye-bye. Thank you. And that was Sarah Hoyt, uh, co-founder and CEO of Connected Living. Thank you, Sarah, for being there. Uh, check out Connected Living's website in the, in the show description of this video. Thank you by, uh, very much for stopping by another episode uh, of the live stream. We will be back next week, uh, Wednesday, 1 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. Hopefully, uh, my internet was not too glitchy and uh, this video came out okay. Uh, and if you have any questions, always call our helpline. 
which is 646-744-2900. And you can email the helpline at uh, helpline at cknyc.org. Uh, thank you very much. And we'll see you next week.